on November 30th, 2008, Supreme Master Ching Hai accepted another invitation from East Coast FM Radio to share with listeners her thoughts on the vegetarian solution to the planetary climate crisis. East Coast FM Radio is one of the most popular radio stations in Ireland, broadcasting from Bray, County Wicklow, since 1989. Its programme on Sunday night is co-hosted by Louise Kings and The Sandman and covers topics that are holistic, spiritual and informative for a nationwide and international audience. East Coast FM Radio's co-host Louise Kings became vegetarian almost a year ago. When her dog was diagnosed with cancer, after researching on the internet, Miss Kings changed her dog's diet to vegetarian. As a result, the cancer stopped spreading completely and her dog lived two more years. Miss King's decision to be vegetarian was further motivated by her reading of Supreme Master Ching Hai's alternative living flyer at an exhibition booth in Dublin. The program's co-host, Mike the Sandman, became a vegetarian after the interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai and from recently watching Supreme Master Television. The interview was broadcast nationwide in Ireland and worldwide on live internet radio. We now invite you to listen to the interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai by East Coast FM Radio on November 30th, 2008. Hello and you're all very welcome to Sunday Night with Louise Kings and the Sandman East Coast FM's Holistical, Spiritual, Cultural and World Event Show. I'm your host, Louise Kings. And I'm the Sandman. And tonight we are extremely honoured again to interview Grand Supreme Master Chang Hai. Now the last time we spoke to her we were discussing the adverse effects of meat eating to both our planet and ourselves and some of the ways that we could help our planet. And tonight she joins us to talk about our oceans and the seas and some of the things that we're going to be discussing will be the coral reefs, contaminants in our fish and some of the effects of overfishing. So we're asking you to be interactive with us tonight. Let us know your thoughts, your comments or your questions. So, uh, we were very honoured to talk to Supreme Master uh, Ching Hai, which we do have online live. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Hello, Louise Supreme and Master. the Sandman. Hi. Hello. How it's are great you? to talk to you again. You're very, very welcome to the show, and we're uh, sitting here with bated breath with all your new knowledge, or old knowledge, uh, about uh, saving the earth. Well, we're going to give her a little bit of feedback from the first show that we did three months ago. Wow. Uh, let me tell you that um, since uh, I spoke to you last, I have gone completely vegetarian, and so much so that I, I cannot even go near a supermarket that has... Um, um, any meat displayed at all and it has made such a great change in my life I do believe it was probably something that was inside was somewhere inside my psyche or somewhere inside that I just newly discovered and now uh, I am just completely against uh, meat eating Wow well, We've had plenty of other feedback uh, Supreme Master that's been really really heartwarming from wow. young children that we've spoken to since the show where they've been talking to their parents about becoming vegetarians, so much so it's even gone as far as going into some schools where they've held some vegetarian cooking days and things. So it's just been fantastic. Um, and aside from that, other people have said they've cut right back down on meat and that they, they plan to kind of phase it out. Uh, for us, it was easy for us to cut it out. But in the three months since we've spoken to you, I mean, the results that we've seen in ourselves has, not just from a physical point of view, but also I think from a spiritual point of view, has been fantastic. And certainly something I would highly recommend to all. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, long may it continue. Yes, well, sir. I have to say, Supreme Master, my hair is in better condition since I've become vegetarian. Truly? It definitely, and my nails. Wow. Hair and nails and skin, definitely a huge improvement. <laughs> yes, beautiful you are. <laughs> You're beautiful all together. You too. Supreme Master, Ireland, as you know, is surrounded by the sea, so I think it's appropriate to start off by taking a look at the wonderful part of our ecosystem and the perilous state that it's in. Um, if we start off with the ocean dead zones, researchers at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden have discovered 20 dead zones around the Irish coastline and 400 worldwide. If global dead zones were combined, they would equal New Zealand in size. 
Scientists mainly blame fertilizer and other farm runoff, sewage and fossil fuel burning. But Robert J. Diaz, professor of the Marine Science of University of Gothenburg, said that we could end up with no crabs, no shrimp and no fish. How important is the sea to human survival? Well, it is as important as the, the forest to us, yes, and the water. Uh, according to research, 50% of our Earth's oxygen is uh, provided by microscopic uh, sea plants. 50%, huh? And now the dead zones in the ocean kept spreading and increasing around the globe. Some were even there for many years, but we have just found them recently. So they cover at least like 95,000 square miles for the one that we have discovered. With more not yet discovered even. The pollution from fertilizers, sewage and fossil burning fuel are to blame according to scientists. But uh, even uh, a cage farming for salmon also caused uh, dead zones. You know, as in the Big Glory Bay in New Zealand, they have discovered that uh, it's also been a dead zone because of the caging salmon farming. So the area has begun to recover after the salmon cages were removed. So according to research and doc documented by Dias and uh, Rosenberg of Swedish uh, Gothenburg University, we will provide you some websites for further info. Uh, right now, I, it's too much to read here, okay? We send it to you. Fantastic. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol levels, reduce type 2 diabetes, prevent stroke conditions, reverse atherosclerosis, reduce heart disease risk 50%, reduce heart surgery risk 80%, prevent many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increase life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, Conserve up to 70% clean water. Save over 70% of the Amazonian rainforest from clearance for animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3,433 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply. Consume two-thirds less fossil fuels than those used for meat production. Reduce pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintain cleaner air. Save 4.5 tonnes of emissions per US household per year. Stop 80% of global warming. Plus more. Actually, there's a very interesting way of looking at it, um, that the... Uh, the sea is like our forest, our, our underwater forest. I've never really looked at it that way. Um, but if we talk about like the, the coral uh, reefs, um, Alex Rogers from the Zoological Society of London, writing in the Journal of Science, said that an astonishing 33% of the world's reef building corals face extinction, uh, extinction, mainly because of overfishing and coastal development um, and pollution with another 50% hanging in the balance. Um, and also a report from the World Resources Institute in 1998 suggested that 60% of the world's coral reefs are threatened by human activity. What would the effects if the coral reefs disappeared and what can we do to prevent this from happening? What would be the effect? Whatever is created there are good for us. Now, the coral reefs are there for some reason. See, there are many factors that affect coral reefs like uh, coastal developments, water pollution, change in uh, seawater temperature uh, because of global warming. So global warming is the greatest threat as it causes coral bleaching or when temperature gets too high. And uh, the coral's important uh, symbiotic uh, algae, algae is uh, lost and uh, 
exposes their white skeleton, and that's the sign of death for the coral colony. As they are sensitive to the environment, e extremely slow in growing as well, uh, some say that they grow only 30 centimeters in 1,000 years, and they need special conditions to survive. Therefore, some scientists predict that most of the coral reefs could disappear in the near future if global warming increases. A scary 10% loss just in the last four years alone. Coral reefs are just like uh, the forest on land. They are the protectors of uh, 100 plus countries, coastlines, against storm surges and hurricanes. They are the protectors. And they are also the supporters of over 25% of all marine species. They are the medical treasure, which is used in uh, many medicines like antihistamines, uh, antibiotic, treating for asthma, heart disease even, etc., etc. And plus, more than 50% of new cancer drug research relies on marine organisms. So you see how important it is. And there are many more things that we have not discovered about the benefit of coral reef and marine life. So we really do need to do what we can to protect them. Yes, we have to stop global warming, that's what. If we were to look at contaminants in, in fresh uh, Supreme Master, uh, dolphin meat sold in Japan has high levels of mercury, methyl mercury, DDT and PCBs. One or more of these contaminants pollute almost all of the dolphin meat for sale in Japan, with one sample having more than 1,600 times the maximum permitted amount of mercury. I can't believe that people are not being informed of the levels of mercury in fish on food packaging as it's even being sold to pregnant women. Master Cheng Hai, do you feel that government should do more to inform, to inform people of these issues? Yes, definitely. The European Union's Food Safety Agency has warned pregnant women uh, to limit swirl fish and tuna intake due to their high mercury levels which can cause, you know, brain damage in unborn babies. The United States Environmental Agency also issued a, a similar warning. It is uh, estimated one in eight American women of childbearing age has dangerous levels of mercury in their blood. 15% of babies in the United States in 2000 were exposed to fatally high levels of mercury according to research conducted by an international team of scientists in Japan in 1999. Dolphin meat is reported to be uh, also even disguised often as whale meat and is uh, mostly contaminated. More than 91% of dolphin and whale samples tested exceed one or two pollutants. Other research shows similar results that uh, dolphin meat are dangerous to mother and fetus. And if mother breastfeeding the child after consuming dolphin meat, then uh, the child also uh, encounter a danger. Some new research as well, to, um, Supreme Master, is that the mercury levels um, can actually affect fertility too. Some Japanese scientists, you know, the one who involved in this uh, Japanese uh, project, stated that these products should be taken off the shelves immediately. And uh, Dr. Palumbi of Harvard University gave the same advice to the Japanese government that they should ban dolphin uh, fishing and they should ban dolphin meat selling in the market. Speaking of uh, fishing, uh, Supreme Master, uh, I think we'll move on to the overfishing as fishing fleets expanded through the late 1980s and as fish finding um, and harvesting technologies became more efficient. Uh, the world's fishers have systematically gone after their catch at greater depths and in more remote uh, waters. Over the past 50 years, the number of large predatory fish in the oceans has dropped by a startling 90%. And according to the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, the four million vessels scouring 
the world's waters are at or exceeding the sustainable um, yields of three quarters of all oceanic fisheries. Master Cheng Hai, if we keep on this path, there will be nothing left in, in the sea. How can we stop this nonsensical destruction uh, of the only sea that we have? We have to stop it somehow. I mean, just stop the fishing. The government has to forbid fishing because it's too important to our survival to delay any further. Not only is there overfishing and depleting of the marine life, but there's also side killing, you know, like uh, when the commercial longliners go fishing, they normally uh, target swirl fish, but then they're killing tens of thousands of sea turtles, you know, by the way, and hundreds of thousands of seabirds and millions of sharks every year. This accidental killing is about 25% extra of our global catch. In the New York Times on November 2006, there's an article, say, a global collapse of fish species. We read, uh, like uh, experts predicted, that in, uh, in its uh, present pace, more and more species will vanish, and the global marine ecosystem will collapse, possibly in mid-century. There's more to this research. Uh, please uh, refer to the website that we will provide for further reference. To stop this destructive practice of fishing, uh, the solution is vegetarian diet. No fishy stuff in our meals. The sea offers us plenty of better food choices. Wide varieties of super healthy and nutritious sea plants. We can even live on it forever. We must protect a living and healthy sea as it relates to our living and healthy self. I think we cannot live without the sea. Okay, summer, imagine you have no beach to go. Just to think about that. If the sea is polluted and dead in some way, where would you go? So true. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption, bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease. E. coli, salmonella. Bird flu, mad cow disease, or Cushfeld Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating, heart disease, over 17 million lives lost globally each year. The cost of cardiovascular disease is at least one trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth. Uses up to 43% of the world's cereal. Uses up to 85% of the world's soy. Cause world hunger and wars. 80% cause of global warming. Plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. 
Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance. Plus more. Um, Supreme Asatenga, as uh, recent converts, um, both myself and the salmon, we'd like to talk a little bit about health and the vegetarian diet, as you just mentioned. You mean in the uh, nutritional value? Yes. You see, uh, we can always be assured that uh, this uh, peaceful diet is more than sound and for all-round healthy and intelligent life. Evidences are plenty, you know, from all aspects physically, mentally, emotionally. Here is some excerpt from the position paper on vegetarian diets, published in the Journal of the American Dietic Association, June uh, 2003. It is said, it is the position of American Dietic uh, Association and Dietitians of Canada that appropriately planned vegetarian diets are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. Vegetarians have lower body mass indices than non-vegetarian, lower rates of death from heart disease, lower blood cholesterol, lower blood pressure, lower rates of hypertension, as well as type 2 diabetes prostate and colon cancer even. Vegetarian diets offer lots of nutritional benefits, including high levels of fiber, magnesium, potassium, uh, folate, and antioxidants, etc., etc. A vegetarian or vegan diet can meet all current recommendations of vital nutrients. Thus, the well-planned vegetarian and vegan diets are appropriate for all stages of life, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, and adolescence. Excellent. We'll, we'll post that up on our own website for listeners to, uh, to check out. It kind of leads on to the, to the next per, uh, question, Supreme Master, that many people are concerned that they won't be able to meet their nutritional needs on a plant-based vegan or vegetarian diet. How can we be assured that a vegetarian or vegan diet is sound? I think we have covered that, uh, by the way. Anyway, nowadays we can always go on to all kinds of uh, nutritional websites or medical websites in order to find out more detail and more convincing evidences about the fantastic healthy and uh, nutritious vegetarian diet. There's no more doubt nowadays. We can always verify with all kinds of experts and uh, all kind of uh, scientific evidences all point out that vegetarian diet is the best, the one and only that should be for human, at least for human. Well, Supreme Master, we look at obesity. Experts are predicting that Ireland is on the verge of an obesity crisis. Uh, since 1990, the rate of obesity in women increased from 13 to 16 percent, and men increased from 8 percent to 20 percent. Obesity and related issues cost the U.S. economy an estimated $100 billion per year and Northern Ireland $500 million uh, per year. How effective is a vegan diet in addressing obesity? Yeah, how effective. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and look at many of our association members. They all look very uh, nicely proportionate and... Uh, you know, healthy, and none of us are, are very uh, overweight at all. Even uh, the one who just uh, began vegetarian diet not long ago, they uh, begin to balance their weight very soon afterward, yeah? And uh, according to the uh, American Dietic Association and Dietitians of Canada again, they review 20 scientific studies concerning vegetarian and vegan diets and concluded that vegetarians were much less likely to suffer obesity than the meat eaters. And throughout research and experiments, uh, 
some of the doctors like uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, uh, MD, and Dr. Furman confirm that a well-balanced, uh, plant-based diet are highly successful in taking weight off and even keep it off. Because you know sometimes people go on diet, they take some weight off and later they gain more because <laughs> they eat more. I've been there, Supreme Master. The psychological uh, pressure on the people who go on diet to take weight off is tremendous. I understand that. that they cannot do it. I mean, it's against their nature, you know? So the vegetarian diet can just eat and then you just take your weight off naturally. And uh, they say that it's even better than gastric bypass surgery and also improve health and helps prolong youthful look and vigor. So you can refer to their books like uh, The Honest Diet, uh, Eat to Live, and Eat for Health for more details. And we will provide you, of course, uh, some more uh, website for your listeners. Wonderful, thank you. Supreme Master Television has broadcast, broadcast a few scientists who have stated that if we would reduce our methane emissions by eliminating meat and dairy, that it would bring us much faster cooling of the planet than by reducing CO2 emissions. Yes. You heard an interview with Professor Kirk Smith at the University of California at Berkeley in the US, who said reducing methane would buy us critical time um, in the fight against climate change. He also said that livestock were the greatest human cause source of methane um, and suggested government tax meat to reduce consumption. Uh, Supreme Master, can you please help us to understand how reducing human caused methane will cool the planet faster than reducing CO2? Scientifically speaking, methane ends its effect much faster than CO2, yeah? And its warming potential is uh, greater than CO2. So if the methane is gone out, then we cool the planet quicker. And the methane dissipates out of the atmosphere in 9 to 15 years, but the CO2 lingers for an estimate range of 40 to 200 years. So because methane goes out faster and heats up the climate more, so if it goes out, then the Earth cool more and quicker compared to CO2 effect. So some intergovernmental panel on climate change scientists say that uh, Eliminating livestock farming would be the fastest way to bring down methane and cool the planet. Thus, by in critical time, you know, in the fight against global warming, as they said. So, in interview with the Supreme Master TV, Dr. Kirk Smith stated that uh, the uh, CO2 emissions could still be hitting the planet thousand years after they are emitted. Can you imagine? So, if we want to see the cooling of our planet in the next uh, one or two decades, it's more effective to reduce methane first. And because the greatest source of methane on the planet is from livestock, so to be a vegan is the fastest way to reduce methane, thus bring cooling to the planet successfully and fast. We're also going to talk, uh, Supreme Master, uh, about how cancer can be caused by meat. Um, leading researcher Dr. Ajit Varki, MD at the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine, again in the United States, has shown that the consumption of meat and milk products could contribute to the increased risk of cancerous tumours. Um, having said this, there are many that feel unclear regarding how much animal protein or calcium uh, for milk they need for a proper balanced diet. So these foods most people think of us as being necessary to keep us healthy are actually foods that are making us ill. Yes, ma'am. Sadly, meat and milk are supposed to be good for us, but they're not. Uh, their consumption is responsible for so many fatalities. Here are some examples, like heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease, at least one trillion US dollars each year. And cancer, one million new colon cancer patients each year at least, and more than 600,000 colon cancer related deaths each year. It costs the United States 6.5 billion US dollars each year. Millions are newly diagnosed with uh, other meat related cancers every year. 
and diabetes. 246 million people affected worldwide with an estimated 174 billion US dollars in treatment annually. Harvard University found that the young women who eat meat regularly increase the risk of breast cancer. The more red meat consumption, the greater the risk. Uh, we will give you a website for more uh, information uh, so you can read to your listeners. That's wonderful, thank you very much. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol levels, reduce type 2 diabetes, prevent stroke conditions, reverse atherosclerosis, reduce heart disease risk 50%, reduce heart surgery risk 80%, prevent many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increase life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, conserve up to 70% clean water, save over 70% of the Amazonian rainforest from clearance for animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3,433 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply. Consume two-thirds less fossil fuels than those used for meat production. Reduce pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintain cleaner air. Save 4.5 tons of emissions per US household per year. Stop 80% of global warming. Plus more. Just to, to mention also, uh, Supreme Master, that about six months ago I had a health check and in the last three months, like I've been totally vegetarian and I actually had a health check today. I didn't have a plan, but it just the way it worked out. And um, let's just say my, my doctor was a little bit baffled at my recovery rate. A lot of mine was to do with internal organs. Um, they're quite shocked and asked me what was I taking. And it wasn't what I was taking, it's what I took out of my diet that made um, a huge difference. Oh, I'm proud of you. Thank Congratulations. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if we talk a little about eating locally versus eating vegan products to reduce emissions, Ireland's food minister, Trevor Sargent, um, has called upon shoppers to buy locally grown produce to reduce emissions and support our local communities. While other groups have also pointed out that the meat, including fish, eggs and dairy products, are also locally grown produce. Supreme Master, how effective is it to eat a vegan or vegetarian diet relative to locally grown and raised produce and animal products to lower emissions? According to some reference I have at hand, a study by Carnegie Mellon University in USA, only 11% of emissions come from transportation and animal products stand for 58% of the emissions in the American diet. So by being vegan, even one day a week, the emissions saved would be more than eating locally all year long. Of course, we have some more website for you to give to your listeners because I'm afraid we don't have enough time, so I don't read all that. <laughs> we'll have to have you back on, Supreme Master. Yes. Do you think, though, Supreme Master, that would most of our children have been vegetarians if we hadn't encouraged them to eat meat? Of course. Have you seen many kids who uh, keep uh, spitting out their food while you're feeding them? <laughs> or when the mother feeding them, they keep spitting it out. Uh, definitely, if we have not encouraged them to have meat, then they would have never gone onto that diet. It is all a question of habit. You see, right from the beginning of the fetus life, the baby has already tried to help the mother to kick out all the toxic elements from her body, hence the morning sickness, etc. Even when the mother to be just happens to smell the odor of fish, according to many mothers, the odor of fish, she normally had no reaction before. Before the pregnancy, she would have no problem smelling it or eating it. But when she's pregnant, she begins to vomit, just to smell the fish. So, and you witness, you know, the infants try to spit out meaty stuff, yeah? That is forced onto them. But then later, they became habitually fed and forced to be accustomed to meat diet, you know, to adulthood. 
because everybody told mother that uh, meat is good, uh, you know, fish is good for the child, so for the love of the child, she feeds them the meat diet. It's a pity, you know, because for most of us, we have been forced into this unhealthy, unloving diet this way. You know, all the children have been forced into this, so we have to change all this, because we know now it's no good. I don't have uh, children, Supreme Master, but I have dogs and I have cats, and I think I spoke to you the last time um, about some of the, the dangers in the, the food, especially in animal products um, or animal pet food. Do you think that, and we could say the same for our pets, as you just mentioned for our children, that you know, they don't automatically need meat to grow or to survive? Of course, your pet don't need meat to survive, because uh, even my pets, they're all vegetarian, you know? So, actually, a vegetarian diet is good not just for human, but for all the animals. I'm going to move on to vegetarianism. Recently, Supreme Master Television interviewed veterinarian and scientist Andrew Knight. Um, Andrew stated that most of the diseases that our beloved pets, including cats and dogs, get, uh, come from the animal-based foods they're being fed, and that a vegan diet um, is the best diet to keep your pets healthy. Um, he also stated that one survey found that 40% of human-grade fish and bacterial counts for more than 500 million per gram, which was the definition of spoiled, and another 30% had bacterial counts in excess of 10 million per gram, which is the definition of rotten. This was human-grade fish. The fish that goes into the commercial cat and dog food is obviously of a much worse quality. Master Ching Hai, I know you feed your pets a vegan diet that we just mentioned, um, but you would state that they're healthy. Yes, definitely. <laughs> they're very, very healthy. <laughs> you can view them on the DVD called The Dogs and the Birds in My Life to prove it. <laughs> They've been for years now on a vegan diet. <laughs> this uh, DVD is a spontaneous recording of my pet, you know, my assistant. They did record them, you know, spontaneously. Uh, or you can see them in my books, The Dogs in My Life and The Birds in My Life. They are all vegan. And sometimes during my cooking show on Sunday, you can see them also running around and they are in their old age even. <laughs> but <laughs> you see them, they are very strong and healthy like a puppy, yes? And you also feed your dogs a vegetarian diet, right? You know how it works. I do now, Supreme Master, because I, I, I spoke to you before about my, my first dog, who was my best friend. Um, unfortunately, she got um, cancer. That's when I started doing my own research about meat and about food and about the food and the quality of food that I was giving her. I thought I was giving her the best, um, but it turned out I wasn't. And the tumours that were growing, um, they were growing really, really aggressively. So through research, I started to realise it was linked to her food. So I drastically changed her diet. I made it completely vegan, um, but I also treated it with various different herbs and um, other homegrown stuff. And uh, she went on to live a year longer than we were told that she was going to because we were able to sort of reduce the tumours rather than increase them with her food. So it wasn't just even reducing the tumour, but her quality of life. Her, she made a dramatic recovery in some ways because she had terrible joint pain prior to this, leg pain, joint pains, and I saw a massive difference in that. So obviously I don't want to do the same to my next pets, so um, they're all on vegan. Yes, it's good. If your listeners would like more information to put their loving pets on a safe and healthy vegan diet, uh, you can log on to Andrew Knight's website, like www.vegapets.info. And you can also download Andrew's show from uh, Supreme Master Television website, suprememastertv.com. And there are many other websites uh, concerning a uh, vegetarian diet, a vegan diet for pets. Uh, we are very safe if we give them vegan diet. Your pets will be healthy, strong, and problem-free. Of course, they won't live forever, and no one does, but at least well, as long as they live, they are pain-free, healthy, you know, <laughs> vigorous, happy, lively. I can tell you that from my own experience, all my pets are vegan. Wonderful. And um, we're going to load up links to those websites off our own because I think that's incredibly um, interesting and important. But it's pretty much that we move on to environmental refugees. Um, a recent report by the aid agency Tear Fund estimated there are currently 25 million environmental refugees, which is more than 22 million officially recognised political and economic refugees. 
And according to Dr. Um, Janice Bogarty, Director of the Institute for Environment and Human Security at the United Nations University in Bonn, um, environmental deterioration currently displaces up to 10 million people per year. Um, and they're expected to be 50 million environmental refugees by 2010. Um, however, international conventions do not recognize environmental refugees such they do not have the same rights uh, to financial and material support. What can we do to help the environmental refugees? What can we do? They are refugees, definitely. Because if we don't have global warming, then uh, no one would be a climate refugee, would they? So no one would like to be a refugee in this case. So now first, we can help them to get back on their feet. The one who has uh, mean and power, yes. We must consider their refugee status legally because they are refugees by all means. And by stopping global warming, we can help to reduce these refugees issues. Uh, I ask everyone from the governments to the citizens to please imagine if that were yourself in the refugee situation, experiencing all these troubles, insecurities, hunger, lacking all comfort, humiliation, undignified situation, uncertain of the morals of your future and the future of your helpless children. Just imagine it, then try to solve this tragedy by helping in whatever way we can. And above all, and most urgently of all, be veg, go green, to save the planet, to prevent such trauma, and to build a bright future for the world, for our co-citizens. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption, bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease. E. coli, salmonella. Bird flu, mad cow disease, or Cushfeld Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating, heart disease, over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least one trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth. Uses up to 43% of the world's cereal. Uses up to 85% of the world's soy. Cause world hunger and wars. 80% cause of global warming. Plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. 
classified as a major allergen, lactose intolerance, plus more. It seems quite clear with the FAO uh, Livestock's Long Shadow report that humankind can no longer continue its present course with the consumption of animal products. The facts are there for us all to see. How can people get to see and research the findings of the FAO? Do the general public have direct access to this information? Yes, we can. We can go to uh, FAO.org and also SupremeMasterTV.com and I'm sure there are many more to download uh, reports. Uh, the FAO also estimates that uh, an annual funding increase of 24 billion US dollars to ease the world hunger will be repaid fivefold in increased productivities and income in return. And according to UNICEF, every 2.3 seconds a child dies from malnutrition while 90% of the world's soil and 50% of the world's grain and 85% of the world's corn are fed to livestock. And they keep breeding more and more. 25,000 people are killed by hunger every day. More than war and AIDS and other disease combined. It's very sad. It's very sad, madam, very sad. We have to change. We have to change this uh, lifestyle of our world. We have to change. Otherwise, we're not human beings. We have to have compassion for others. Prima, Master, we never have a long enough to speak with you. But just quickly, I'm just going to move to bees. Yes. Um, in order for us to have fruits and vegetables, uh, the plants, crops and flowers must be pollinated. Uh, without bees, 80% of fruits and vegetables will disappear. Uh, recently, the bee population have been reduced dramatically across the US and Europe. Um, what do you think is the cause of this and what can we do to keep our bee population alive and healthy? By using organic farming and eating organic food, we will help the bee population. It's reported that there are several causes for the bees' decline, like genetically modified crops, chemical pesticides, and other spray substances for plants. Climate changes also affect the environmentally sensitive and fragile bees. A uh, reference can be found from the recent German journal, uh, Der Spiegel. Also, uh, there's a report by Dr. Ricarda Steinbrecher, the scientist of uh, Pesticide Action Network Asia and the Pacific, and the director of uh, Econexus UK, all from the Soy Association UK. The pesticides uh, neonicotinoids noise are banned by some EU countries and may be banned throughout the EU in the near future by vote to protect public safety and wildlife from these dangerous chemicals. As uh, Peter Melchett, director of the Soy Association, stated. Thank you again. Over to you, Simon. Yes, um, Supreme Master, and thank you for that. I just have a couple of questions here, and we're talking about the planet, and we're talking about uh, the future, and we're talking about the ser serious condition our world is in in so many levels. Uh, it seems that the, the vegan diet can solve most of the world's eco and health issues uh, for both humans and uh, our fellow beings. But the Union of Concerned Scientists, some 1,700 of the world's leading scientists, including the majority of the Nobel laureates uh, in the science, uh, gave the following warning as far back as 1992. And I know we spoke about this before, but I, I, I'll read it out again. And these are the world-renowned scientists. And my question is really, why don't we listen to these people? And this is what they say, and this is in 1992. We, the undersigned, senior members of the world scientific community, hereby warn all humanity of what lies ahead. A great change in our stewardship of the earth and the life on it is required. 
if vast human misery is to be avoided and our global home on this planet is to be irrevocably uh, mutilated. Uh, scientists issued this warning hope that their message is, uh, reaches and affects many, many people. Master Cheng Hai, what advice can you give to our listeners and to the world? Yeah, follow the scientists and heed their warning. You see uh, why so many great thinkers and scientists, uh, even Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, Edison and George Bernardo, they are vegetarians because they are smart, yes? And so we have to heed the present scientists' warning now. And I, I plead with all the world people, please heed their advice. Choose the life and earth saving vegan diet. Do good deeds and help those in need. Protect animals and environment. And pray that all we heed the scientists' wise counsel and turn to a benevolent life courses, which will in turn offer a benevolent life on earth. Thank you. Thank you. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol levels, reduce type 2 diabetes, prevent a stroke conditions, reverse atherosclerosis, reduce heart disease risk 50%, reduce heart surgery risk 80%, prevent many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increase life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, conserve up to 70% clean water, save over 70% of the Amazonian rainforest from clearance for animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3,433 billion hectares of land. Free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply. Consume two-thirds less fossil fuels than those used for meat production. Reduce pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintain cleaner air. Save 4.5 tons of emissions per US household per year. Stop 80% of global warming. Plus more. Green Master, we just really want to say thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your passion. Uh, we received the award for Shining World uh, Compassion and uh, we're both very, very humble and very, very honoured to receive this. So thank you. Yes, you deserve it. Greatly. You deserve more than that. <laughs> I wish you the best in your endeavours and your health. I wish Ireland all the best, prosperity, peace and happiness to your people. And to you. We hope to talk to you again soon, Supreme Master. So long for now. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless you for your noble work. God bless you. I just want to say a very, very big thank you to Grand Supreme Master Ching Hai for talking to us. Um, it's always a fascinating uh, conversation that we have, or have with her, but it's never long enough. Um, and tonight, even though that she was live from another country, we were actually able to see her, um, which was truly, truly amazing. But one of the things that we didn't get to uh, say that I wanted to finish off, which was actually a bit of good news um, that we wanted to say to Master Ching Hai, if she was still listening, is that the, the Irish Minister for Food and Horticulture, Trevor sergeant sent a letter to all farmers in Ireland encouraging them to go organic and informing them of the benefits of going organic. He let the farmers know of the different organic colleges available and of the EU and Irish government grants open to farmers. So hopefully that will move on to very, very positive things. Thank you for joining us on today's Words of Wisdom for the interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai by East Coast FM Radio. And now, please stay tuned for a journey through aesthetic realms. 
coming up next on Supreme Master Television, right after Noteworthy News. May the providence guide your life in nobility, wisdom and love.